in, in combat, um, nothing ever goes exactly as it's planned. You, uh, you plan the mission, you, you know what you're supposed to accomplish. But in the process, um, unexpected things do come up. And they change. And you have to adapt to that. When you come back home, it should not be complicated. There should be any unexpected things that say, the veteran now has to change his way or her way that individual got injured, uh, came home, and now needs the VA without the complications and the maze and jumping through all of the hoops. And that's the kind of the message we'd like the American people to have so that they can help us change the VA. When you come home, there's where the problem begins because you get off the plane, you know, and then all of a sudden you're right back into this life, you know, and this life is altogether different than the life that you just were for the last year, especially if you've been in some situations, you know, in, in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever it may be, and, and the problem, that's where it begins because people don't realize what you're going through. I think we all have to recognize that our government does care about the veteran and that this is probably the greatest nation on the earth to be a veteran in. We have laws and regulations that are there to help out. The problem happens to be is getting access to them. And access sometimes becomes the problem. And that's where the DAV steps in to help get that access opened up so the veteran can get the benefit of the health care he needs. When I left the VA, once I found out I was denied benefits, I then went to um, the DAV for assistance. And when I went in there and spoke to one of their counselors, they pointed me in the right direction and, and told me who I needed to speak to. And then I contacted him. And I set up an appointment. And he got the ball rolling with me filing for my notice of disagreement with the denial the VA had given me. The Department of Defense uh, will probably tell a veteran who's being discharged, well, your, dis your disability doesn't qualify you for retirement or for severance pay. Uh, it's only a minor disability. Uh, quite the opposite when they come to the disabled American veterans. What we do is we review the medical records. We look over what the veteran should have been entitled to, whether it be with the Department of Defense or with the VA, and then we advocate. I felt a little bit better that someone actually understood what I was going through. Organizations like the DAV have to maintain high levels of awareness. People do have a short time span. It's front page news on Saturday. On Sunday, it's page 12. In the meantime, we've got kids laying in beds in substandard conditions. Don't deserve that kind of treatment after the, the, the work that they have done on behalf of our nation. It's, it, 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 they should be guaranteed the highest quality medical care and treatment. End of story. I don't think people realize how important this transportation is to veterans. This is so important. It's meant so much to me in my life. It's going to mean so much to these young veterans today that we must continue the DAV, their transportation, the other voluntary services that they have that the VA does not have presently the funds evidently to give. And. Uh, we must have it. I think that people should get involved. I mean, you know, we, what we're finding out is that these things aren't funded by the government. Um, people think that there's lots of money out there that the government's going to throw at p programs like this, but what we found out is that those funds have to come through uh, individual contributions from the citizens. We've got, I believe, to let the public know. I wish people would get off the sidelines and start getting involved, and I'm talking about the public. How many of us would be willing to give up an arm or give up our eyesight or, or a foot or something like that for the amount of money that they're receiving from this. And I think there's ways that we can reach out you know, to these individuals, but we have to, maybe it's by donations, maybe it's by phoning your congressman, maybe it's um, 
just involving the family members and starting the telephone trees to let people know that these individuals have worked extremely hard and have given a great deal for the freedom of this country. It's again, we start with public awareness. We infuriate the public as much as we in the veterans community are infuriated through the public's awareness. We put pressure on our legislators and bring bring that pressure to bear on them to go forth and fund the programs that are responsible for taking care of these kids when they come home from the battlefield. Obviously, if, uh, if an individual is willing to put their life on the line, uh, there is a responsibility of government to come back and take care of that individual when he does get hurt or, her, or she gets hurt. Um, it's just, quite frankly, to me it's amazing that Congress doesn't understand that. My grandfather was in the Civil War. And on down through uh, World War I and uh, World War II and whatever, the needs of veterans have accumulated. Now we're having young people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, 18, 19 year olds. And in another 50 or 60 years, they're going to need the same things that we need right now.